You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of the You are exalted above the names. Hello, very good day to you. My name is Sister Temi Tayo. I'm a Christian content creator and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Now, the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional and all those videos from 2020. They are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view those old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that will bless you. And while you are on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe. And the Lord bless you as you do. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And God bless you. Now, Pastor Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor gives you a few scriptures from the Bible and the memory verse, and that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's go straight into the daily devotional. Today is Tuesday, January the 16th. Tuesday, January the 16th. And the title of today's daily devotional is the Book of Remembrance. The Book of remembrance praise god and you know in the book of malachi god talked about the book of remembrance was opened you know so here but we're going to be looking at the book of esther chapter 6 verses 1 to 11 for this particular today is the book of remembrance part one so this is a series amen so esther chapter 6 verses 1 to 11 i'm going to be reading from the traditional king james version praise god esther chapter 6 verses uh, 1 to 11. So the story here is that, um, you know, we all know Haman, he was second in command to King Ahasuerus uh, or Ataxerxes, and, um, you know, he was very proud. He was of the descendants of the, uh, it was Haman the Agagite, was a descendant of King Agat, Agag, the Amalekite, from whom the Lord told Saul to destroy, which he failed to do. And that's where Haman came from. Because Saul failed to do what God called him to do. Down the line, in the generations, here comes Haman, his descendant, who now wants to rise up against the children of Israel. Because he hated Mordecai. Because Mordecai would not bow to him at the gate. So he decided, I'm going to destroy Mordecai. But I'm not going to destroy him alone. I'm going to destroy his brother, his sister, his uncle, his auntie, his grand aunties, his sister, all his family members. I'm going to destroy all of them. You know, and so... Um, he convinced the king, you know, he led the king to sign a decree that all the Jews should be destroyed. And um, somehow his niece Esther was queen, you know, by the divine arrangement of the Almighty God, by the workings of the Almighty God, Esther had become queen. And they fasted and prayed. They prayed and fasted for three days and three nights. And um, and that's where we will now take. So um, now, so um, the the just as they were planning to kill the Jews to, you know, begin to, you know, do their plans, Esther began to pray and to fast and God began to intervene. And this was the result of the intervention of God. Strangely, the name of God is not mentioned at all in the book of Esther, but he's the, he's the one, he's the one walking. The Bible says he walketh, you know, he, 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 he makes all things to work together, together for our good. You know, he's at work in us, both will and to do of his good pleasure. He is the the Lord is the main player in the book of Esther, yet his name is not mentioned. Praise God. Let's go. So, um, on that night, could not the king sleep? And he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. And it was found that Mordecai had told of Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king, on king, on the king Ahasuerus. And the king commanded, what honor and dignity had been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, there's nothing done for him. And the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house to speak unto the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, let him come in. 
And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman, behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. Verse 6. So the Haman came in, and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom will the king delight to do honor more than myself? And the king answered, and Haman answered the king, for the man whom the Lord delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king rided upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head, and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man without whom the king delighted to honor and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor then the king said to haman make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said and do evil so unto mordecai the jew that sitted at the king's gate let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken then took haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai and brought him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. Praise God. So um before this, Haman had, you know, um his his wife and some of the people that were with him had said, You know what you do, just build gallows, you know, like a gallows so that you can a deep gallow where you hang Mordecai especially. But God sort of intervened, and for some reason, the, the king could not sleep. Anytime the king cannot sleep, God is doing something. You know, same with Pharaoh, same with, you know, um, Nebuchadnezzar. They had these strange dreams, you know, um, because God wanted to do something. And so he had this dream, and uh, no, no, he didn't have this dream. He just um, couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep. And he, for some reason, he called for the Book of Remembrance, you know, and then he found out that at one point in time, Two of his chamberlains, two of his eunuchs wanted to kill him and somebody exposed them and that person was Mordecai. And then he said, was anything done for this guy who saved my life? And they said, no, nothing was done for him. And it happened that he now said, um, hmm, who is in the court? And he said, oh, Haman is just right coming in. He said, what shall be done for the person who the king wants to honor? And Haman, because he was so full of pride, he thought it was him that the king wanted to honor. So the king said, what shall I do for somebody whom I want to honor? And he listed all these things that he thought that the king, he would love to, you know, have the king do for him. He probably wanted the throne as well. And it turned out that that person happened to, um, happened to be, um, happened to be, you know, Mordecai. Praise God. In the in this book of Esther, this book of remembrance is called um, the Book of Records of the Chronicles, but it's the same book. In Book of Malachi, it was called the Book of Remembrance. Same thing. All right. So let's go. The, the, the memory verse for today is taken from the Book of Nehemiah, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen. Nehemiah, chapter thirteen, verse fourteen, and it says, "Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe." not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. Remember me, O God, concerning this and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God. And that's in Nehemiah 13, 14. Now, ne and Nehemiah was really meticulous about telling the Lord all that he had done. He was very mathematical. He would just say, Lord, he, you know, there was a time when he um, when you know the children of Israel when he went to build to help rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, you know the children of Israel used to go to the gates, city gates, and sell wares on the Sabbath day. So he then went to the people that were bringing wares on Sabbath and said, if he should see them there again, he was going to deal with them, and he forbade the children of Israel from selling on Sabbath day. You know, or, or you know. You know, doing business on the Sabbath day. And he said to them, This is why God drove us away from, you know, that's this is why God was angry with us in the first place. And you guys are still, you know, breaking the commandments. And then when he had done that and, you know, put an end to pe to the Jews selling wares on trading on, on Sabbath, he said, Lord, remember me, oh God, for all the work I've done towards thy house. So he always reminded God, Remember me, oh Lord. So, Pastor says, I prophesy to you today. That as you read this, a pleasant book of remembrance will be opened in your favor in Jesus' name. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, the word remember means to bring to, to bring back a piece of information into your mind or to keep a piece of information in your memory. So, Pastor, that is praying for us that God will, you know, God will, God will remember 
um, the good things that we have done. And he would, you know, he said, I will not, the former things will I will not remember anymore. You know, he said, I remember not the former things, you know, he will not, he will not, he will remember our iniquities no more is what he said. So pastor is saying a pleasant book of remembrance will be opened in your, in our favor in Jesus name. And I say a big amen. And he says that the word remember means to be able to bring back a piece of information into your mind or to take a piece of information into or to keep a piece of information in your memory praise god so god remember us for good you know um um i i said that in psalm 119 a certain place in psalm 119 it says remember me or remember the promise unto thy maid servant upon which thou has caused me to hope you know so that means god can give a word and you know to you and you will hold on to that word and say lord remember me remember the word unto your maid servant or unto your servant upon which you have caused me to hope now pastor says in genesis 8 verses 1 the bible says that god remembered noah ordinarily one cannot imagine that god can be forgetful or not remember the family he puts in an ark thus when the bible said that god remembered noah pastor is saying to us that it could only mean that god was now paying attention to noah's situation the same thing okay so God doesn't forget. He can't forget. You know, He's the Almighty. He's the Almighty God. He He's um He's the all is perfect. You know. So Pastor is saying that it's not that God forgets for God. It's just that um when when we say God remembered, God remembered Noah. You know, when Noah entered into the ark and all the animals and everything, and God said He was going to bring the flood. When they had entered, it was God that shut the door behind them. Praise God. He was not that shut the door before. You know, he's the one that shuts and no man can open. And the one that, that opens and no man can shut. He shut the door behind them. Then at a certain time, the Bible says, and God remembered Noah. And if he remembered also, the Bible says he remembered also the animals, you know, and um, and he, op- you know, and, and then he let them out. Praise God. It means that God was now paying attention to Noah's situation and then pastor says the same thing applied to rachel in genesis 30 verses 22 to 23 where the bible says genesis 30 22 to 23 where it says that and god remembered rachel and god hearkened to her and opened her womb as she conceived and bare his son and said god had taken away my reproach now we know that it was god that shut the room he shut the womb of rachel he actually did you know because when he found out that jacob loved rachel and hated leah he shut rachel's womb because when he opened he 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 the bible says he he remembered and he opened her womb that means he was one that shot it before and then he gave leah conception because he found out that he saw that leah was hated you know and god is a god of justice without in without he's a god without injustice good and upright is he so and then but the bible says and god remembered rachel and god hearkened to her that means rachel was praying and opened her womb and she conceived and bare a son and said god had taken away my reproach and she called his name joseph and the above scripture pastor says reveals another meaning of remembrance the taking away of reproach by a higher power when god remembers a barren woman she conceives and bring becomes a mother of children like in the case of hannah which is in first samuel chapter 1 verses 1 to 28 first samuel chapter 1 verses 1 to 28 she had constantly she was she had been constantly provoked and humiliated by her re- arrival because of her barrenness and it seemed like her case was hopeless you know so two things god remembered noah he began to pay attention so god doesn't forget because you see in the book of exodus i think um i opened it it says in the book of exodus chapter 2 verses um um uh, um, 24 and 25 so when the pharaoh died the children of israel began to groan you know it says that and god heard their groaning and god remembered this covenant with abraham isaac and jacob and god had had respect he looked on the children of israel and had respect unto them and he acknowledged them so when the pharaoh died they began to cry as they began to you know pour out their their hearts to god as a result of the trouble and god remembered his covenants Remember this covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he had respect unto them. You know, and you know the Bible says, "Have respect unto thy covenant, for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty." Amen. So God remembered the children of Israel when He heard their cry, and He also heard the cry of Rachel. So that means prayer can cause God to remember. Praise the Lord. And Pastor is saying that um, um, uh, remembrance also means the taking away of reproach. And that's exactly what happened to both Rachel and Hannah. 
you know, Hannah then made a vow and said, Lord, if you give me a, a, a male child, I will give him to you and he will serve you all the days of, you know, his life. And God said, really? Really? You're going to do that? Okay, I'll give you five extra children. However, God remembered her and intervened in her situation when she cried out to him in Shiloh. And when she returned to Shiloh, she was carrying her testimony in her hands. Hallelujah. God is going to remember us today. He's going to remember us pleasant. He's going to remember us for good. He's going to remember. He says he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He says that God will not forget uh, our labor of love in the name of Jesus Christ. God is going to remember us today. You know, um, He's going to remember his, his, you know, the, the, what we have done and our prayer will come up to him as incense in Jesus name. And pastor says in our Bible reading for today, God intervened in the case of Mordecai against his adversary, Haman. Mordecai and his niece Esther prayed and there was a breakthrough. The king was unable to sleep and he commanded that the record books be read to him. And while this was being done, the good deed of Mordecai that had been forgotten was brought to remembrance. That could only have been God. It could only have been God. Nehemiah understood these things that understood that understood the things that can happen when God remembers the fellow. And that's why he prayed that prayer in today's memo, memory verse. So, but we can see in this in the in the story of Hannah, the story of Rachel, and we can see in the story of Nehemiah that um it was because they prayed, they 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 brought to remembrance. What you know, they, they called on God and the children of Israel also. They when they began to groan, that it was their prayer that God heard and He remembered. Amen. He remembered. It was when He heard their groaning that He He then took action. Praise God. He then took action. So we must we must pray concerning the situation which we are you know that we are facing, and God um, would remember us. Amen. Remember the word unto thy maid servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Amen. Remember me, O oh Lord. Beloved, I encourage you to ask the Almighty. I, I, I encourage you to I, I encourage you to ask that the Almighty should open a book of pleasant remembrance for you this year, for us this year. I join my faith with yours and I pray that He will remember us for good all through this new year and beyond in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Pastor has joined his faith with us, and God will remember us for, for pleasant good. Pleasant remembrance. He won't remember our 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 sins and our lawless deeds. He remembers no more because they are now under the blood. It's for for a good remembrance. Amen. And he will give us a just reward. The, the prayer points, Father, please open a book of positive remembrance for me this year. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, Almighty God. Father, we ask that you remember us for good. Remember the word that upon which you have given to us, upon which you have caused us to hope. Remember us, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus and reward us accordingly because the Bible says you will give us a rich reward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, remember the covenant, Almighty God, you have with your, our father Abraham, Almighty God. He said if we are Christ, then we are Abraham's seed and we are heirs, heirs according to the promise. Therefore, Lord, bless us indeed in the name of jesus christ enlarge our coast in the name of jesus remember us for good in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father we give you praise let the books of remembrance be brought forth remember almighty god all that we have done and reward us accordingly thank you holy spirit remember them that are calling unto you for the fruit of the womb oh god take away their reproach oh god in the mighty name of jesus remember almighty god those of us who are calling upon you almighty god for our future partners almighty god you said you set the solitary into family father lord remember also god God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I hope it wasn't too long. God bless you exceedingly. My name again is Sister Temitayo, and do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you do if you've not done so already. And God bless you. So every time I upload a video, you are aware. Very important. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Temitayo. God bless you.